Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hello. Lola. Lola has proven to have the loudest and longest bark. Okay, Lola. Okay, Lola. Oh, my goodness. She's just fitting right in here. All right, relax. I'm going to give him a treat so that, that she'll shut up. <laughs> I love her. I love her. Here you go. Here you go. How are you all this morning? It's Rita. From uh, Miss Rita to the Rescue and my lovely Barky dogs. Well, one of them is not Barky. That's Benjamin. He's sitting here right by my feet. And Lola's trying to nip off my fingers and Teddy Bear is behind her. So we're all here today to um, have our Cricket Chat program, which is a daily program um, on Facebook. It's live and there's a chat element that hence it's called Cricket Chat. Um, and we do Cricket projects. If you're new, please introduce yourself because there are some uh, really great people that come on a regular basis here and they're so friendly. And what is really exciting to me is like last year we were all strangers and this year we're friends. We send each other cards. We care about each other. And if somebody's having a hard time, we send, you know, good wishes and, and good vibes and prayers. And it's just a really lovely group. Um, a little bit more than you'd expect from just a crafting group. So I would invite you to join. We also have some Facebook groups. One is called Cricket Chat. Uh, with Miss Rita, and then we also have Just Cricket Joy, which is a, another group that we have. I have other groups, but those are the two newest groups that I really love, and um, I really love this, this Cricket Joy, and I've been giving them away for several months now. If you have not have you, if you've not heard of this, this is something I do every month. Um, every month I give away one of these babies and uh, enough product to equal $250. So you get this and you get like smart materials and card mat in you know, index, what do you call them? Insert cards and um, to have a really fun time. It's free. Uh, to get your name in, you can do it twice a day, and um, you all you have to do is follow, um, like, comment, share, any of that stuff of my Facebook groups or f Facebook posts, and then also my uh, YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Cricket Chat with Miss Rita, and if you have never seen that, there are hundreds uh, of videos like these that go over specific things based on the you know title so let's get started today we're going to be working with the Cricut Joy I have all of the machines I work with all of the machines but I really like this machine it's so portable and it's really cute and um, I I don't use it as much as I I would like, but today we're going to do something um, that's kind of fun. It's an infusible ink. This is infusible ink. We're going to talk a little bit about infusible ink and then also other opportunities to, to decorate things like this. And um, we're going to also talk about the size of these infusible ink transfer sheets as well. Okay, so um, what is infusible ink? Well, infusible ink is um, is a type of iron on. Uh oh, someone's got a squeaky toy. Um, okay, it's a type of iron on. It comes in this square box. So when you're going to the store and you see these square boxes, you'll know it and you'll see it says infusible ink. Infusible ink is Cricut's version of. Um, sublimation uh, and you may have heard about sublimation or you may be a sublimation pro um, but this is a type of sublimation it has its own rules and such but uh, but it's pretty much what sublimation is yesterday we did sublimate I'm sorry infusible ink t-shirts with uh, with infusible 
ink on them. We did the shirts with the ink. And we talked about um, the kind of blank that we needed for this. And that is, and we call these blanks. The, the things you're going to decorate are called blanks. And this one here is, is a Cricut blank, as is this, right? But if you don't want to use the Cricut blanks, um, you can buy... Uh, off brand or you know your favorite brand as long as the polyester count we're talking about soft goods today not mugs we we um mugs and coasters we that's a little bit different ball game so a lot of times you can go into walmart or you can go on amazon and you can find shirts that maybe are they fit you better or you like the style better they don't have them um and what you're going to look for is something that has a very high polyester count so here you can see the crew neck tee has a 95 percent polyester five percent spandex for the stretch and you need that so if you have a cotton shirt that you really really love there are things you can do to make it better like you there's sprays that you can put on and other people have done some things where they've bleached the the surface and everything we're not going to go over those things at least not today we're going to use the products that were intended for um, infusible ink but you can find these blanks in walmart and in target and stuff like that just look for high polyester count um, Amazon as well has some things. So today we're actually going to be using this. This is called a wine bag blank or a beverage bag. I love this idea. Are you the kind of person that goes to an event? And I'm going to give you my example. You go to an event and um, mostly you're going to either bring like a bottle of wine or maybe you're going to a wedding like I am and uh, the young bride and groom really only want money. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time with that because um, I like to make things and I, I don't know what, I don't really know what to do for them, but I decided, okay, maybe I'll just buy them a bottle of wine and, um, make them a cute wine bag and, uh, with infusible ink, that's sort of, you know, celebratory and then give them a card with money in it. So I don't have a problem with giving money. It's not that it's just, I always have such wonderful ideas and I don't go to many of these, uh, these events anymore. So I just love to make things and I just don't want them to be disappointed either. So this is a wine bag. You can pick these up elsewhere, but I will point out this is 100% polyester. Let's go in here and look. See, 100% polyester. Okay, and that is so that the infusible ink will work on the product. Now, infusible ink is kind of its own little animal, and I want to show you um, show you what it is. So, when you buy infusible ink, you can buy it in this a very long box, or you can buy it in this smaller box now the smaller box is perfect for the joy and a lot of times you'll see it has a cricket mug press on here those are the newest ones but they're interchangeable you can use this large one with the joy it's not a problem and in fact if you are somebody who likes to save money um you can buy your infusible ink in these long bits and cut them so that they'll work in your mug press or on your joy. You don't need to have a big machine to have these big, um, these big transfer sheets. I'm going to show you what I do usually with that. So when you get the transfer sheets, this is what they look like. See on the back, it has like a shiny surface and it says infusible ink. That's the backing. And it's also kind of the protective when we put heat on it. Okay. This is uh, considered the front and what it looks like kind of an off, off color, uh, white, like kind of a white, 
uh, this is actually green. And I want to point out that the color on the box is the color you're going to get in your end result. But it looks like this. Why does it look like this? I don't know. I just know that this is paper. And on this paper is impregnated a special kind of ink. This is an ink that once heat is applied, it turns into a gas and then it moves from the paper onto your surface. And that's heat, it's a heat application. That's what infusible ink is, okay? Um, and so if you want to use infusible ink with your joy, all I would suggest you do if you have the big pieces is get out your personal trimmer. I love these things. These are my favorites. Um, and this is how this works. There's a little arm and you take this sheet. And by the way, don't worry about it being curled um, it's best to keep these in the box so it doesn't come in contact with water water will make it kind of uh, it, it will make it splotchy and and will make the ink run so try to keep it away from water so all I'm doing is taking a 12 by 12 sheet here and I'm cutting it at four and a half inches so that means I'm going to get two of these sheets plus an extra and definitely keep your extras okay so there's your extra this is the proper size for fitting on the joy now um infusible ink is not a smart material a smart material means that it goes into the machine and um, does not need a mat. But infusible ink is actually a um, is a, a product that needs to go on a mat. The Joy has its own mats. Uh, there are two two different sizes. That's why I have these. It, I'm not including the card mat because that's its own thing, but it has the smaller mat and the larger mat. But because I am going to be making something very long, I'm using the long mat here. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take our four and a half inch piece and you see how it fits right on there. We're going to push it down. And now our mat is all ready to go in the joy. Now, it it is curling a little bit. I can see that. That's why it's kind of important to use good mats. Or if you um, need to, you can also use that two-way zig glue to sort of refresh your mats. Okay? Um, so let's go on to design space. We went over yesterday quite a bit of design space so on my iPad, so we don't need to go over it too much, but I will mention that there are tons and tons of wonderful, um, wonderful options for wine bags or beverage bags if you um, search for them. So this is the iPad, this is the iOS. I am going to uh, make sure that my profile reads that I am on the Joy. Remember yesterday I was on the, the um, Explore 3, so I have changed my machine selection to Joy. I also make sure under my settings that on Bluetooth that my joy is connected see that connected okay so when I'm looking for I keep getting this maintenance it's good that they're reminding us so when I start off um, in the iOS I can just type in wine bag and you will see there's quite a few um, wine bag. So here's one that says, uh, drink and be merry. This is a monogram. This is cheers. That might work out for me because, um, because I'm giving it to somebody for a wedding. Um, and there really isn't a whole lot that you need to do. You just need to sort of check this out and say, okay, I'm going to need some infusible ink. This one here happens to be sparkle mermaid but I have a green, so I'm gonna try the green. And then I need a standard grip mat. 
Um, and because we're using the joy, we need the joy sized one. You're going to need an easy press and also the easy press mat and some butcher paper, okay? So here we go. This is what we wanna do. If we want to just, if we're happy with this and we wanna just make it, you can just hit make it. You don't have to go to customize and have a look at it. It doesn't matter. Um, it's not gonna change anything. I I often go to customize because, well, I like looking at my file and I also like to customize my files. So this one says cheers. And if um, I wanted to, I don't know, add a name or something like that, this is where I would do it. And then when I was ready, I would hit make it. Okay, now this is infusible ink, so we have to choose on the mat. And you will see, this is the joy size mat right here, and you'll see it's the 12 inch one. And what you'll see is that you can actually read this. See, you can read cheers. That's not gonna work for infusible ink. You have to mirror anything like iron-on, infusible ink, anything that's considered iron-on, you have to mirror. And that's because when you're cutting from this, you're cutting on the back, sort of the back, and then once you cut it, let me see, where's my... This is from yesterday, but so we're cutting it this way, and let me show you the letters. See, this one says bad, and the B-A-D right here is backwards. So that's what you're aiming for with your cut. I know it looks a little odd, but you'll get used to it. So how do you make that change? Well, you just need to come up here where there's this little mat, okay? And we're going to press on that, and we have several choices, and we can do mirror right here from this from this mat. This is the place you're gonna do the mirroring. And so you just turn it on like that and you will notice that now you cannot read it, right? It's backward, all right? So we have it correct. Be nice, be nice to each other. So we can hit continue. It's okay. Um, and we, here we are at the third screen, the cut screen, and we need to find what we're going to cut, what's the material. So we're choosing infusible ink, which I have set as a favorite, but I can also go to all materials and see all the compatible materials with the joy, okay? And that includes smart vinyl and smart iron-on. So when we look, we can look at iron on and you will see in infusible ink transfer sheet and it does say make sure you're mirrored so if you can read this that's a good rule of thumb then you um are not mirrored if you can read it um, unless you're one of very few people who can read uh backwards so um this is all set ready to cut so why don't we go ahead and do it uh, and then I'm going to show you how to iron it on. How to basically turn the ink from the infusible ink into the gas and put it impregnated onto our, our wine bag, okay? So it's all set. Here's my infusible ink. It's kind of a little bit, I should have used a new blank, but it hasn't come in yet, a new map, but it hasn't come in yet. So you'll notice that my joy is blinking and that's because it's ready to take in the mat and we're just going to put the mat below these guides and I have already in there my blade and my housing all set in there. We're going to just put it in. You do need to leave room in the back for it. Whoa. Okay. So this is coming up. So what would I do about this? Let me see if I have my, I could try a different mat. And if I want to get unload my mat and try a different mat, I just hit unload here. Okay. Because this mat is just not sticky enough. So let me try a different mat.
this one is pretty sticky. So let's try this one. I'm gonna put that on here. There's also something called a brayer that might help and that will help you push it down, but you can also achieve the same thing with your hand. And this seems like it's sticking better than the other one. So let's try this again, pushing it in, allow the machine to sort of um, take it in and assess that it has enough length and I think this is going to work. So now all I need to do here is I need to hit go and this will start to cut. Keep in mind that mats for the Joy, just like mats for any of the machines, do need to be replaced from time to time. You can do some things to make them last longer and that includes cleaning them. If you want to clean your mat, all you need to do is take it over to your sink and give it a good scrub with um, some warm soapy water, like dish, dish, uh, dish soap, Dawn or Joy or whatever else you have, and then just uh, sort of scrub rub it off. Once you dry it and air dry it, usually the stick will come back. And I just want to point out here, you see this? That is just all gunk, like mostly paper gunk, because I do cut a lot of paper. So sometimes that will help prolong the life of your mat. Um, other things that you could do is you could use a two-way glue. I have um, something that I always use and I don't know why it's not here, but it's called Zig Memory System Two. Whoa! Zig Memory System Two-Way Glue, and I will post a link for it in the description of this video. So if you are looking to sort of restick your mats, you can do use that. The other thing you can try is Aileen's Tack It Over and Over, but it does need to be um, watered down a bit because it's super thick. And both of these things, basically, when they dry, they leave a sticky residue, and that's going to work for your mat. But eventually, you have to replace mats. I hate doing it, but indeed, um, indeed, that is what you need to do. Okay, so unload. And now it's done. Let's have a look. So see that? Now, this all is extra. So I'm going to cut this out and keep these pieces because I like... Um, having little scraps around that I can work with. So where's my scissors? Scissors here, here's a pair, okay. So I'm just gonna cut out around this. Just so that um, I'm not wasting material. You'll find if you are a Cricut a person for a while, you'll you'll start doing this, you'll start saving your materials. And that's okay too, because I often will do projects that are just a lot of um a lot of different scraps. A lot of Lori Whitlock's projects are great for using up scraps and everything. So infusible ink um weeds differently. This is called weeding. It means you're just going to take off the extra part, but it weeds differently than iron-on. So this, I just wanted to point out, this is iron-on. It will say iron-on on, on it. You're going to be looking for infusible ink for this project, but it will say iron-on. Now, can you use iron-on on an infusible ink blank? You sure can. You absolutely can, but it is made specifically for um, for infusible ink. Infusible ink, as I mentioned, is a paper. So what we're going to do is sort of roll it or sort of bend it until we get an edge here. And then we're going to start peeling it off. And you can rip it if you want just to get it all off. And that's what I'm doing here. So. Here is what we got. So, 
and we're gonna be careful of things like this. See that little tiny piece there? <clears throat> we need that, that's part of the design. However, if you lose it, it's not the end of the world. So don't, don't freak out and have to start over again. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm kind of taking my time with this because there are a few little pieces that I want to make sure get onto my design. That stay on my design, I should say. This is one of those, it looks like kind of like a library font um, or a chalkboard font. Okay, so... Actually, look at this one. There's got, it's like a dimensional letter. So it has this little piece of, uh, of the infusible ink that we wanna keep on there. So we're gonna tear this part off, you see? Now, I wanna point this out, cause it does happen. Sometimes this will stay on there. It's not going to affect your project, but it is if you're, a little bit obsessive um it is a it is a little bit of an eyesore you don't have to take it off but um i'm going to just show you what i do i use either a weeding tool or a pair of scissors like this and sort of just kind of scrape it off or rub it off without ruining the other parts of the see now sometimes when you're doing this um the the letter might or a letter or a part of it might lift up like right here that's okay because we're as long as we get this onto our project piece or like right here that's okay don't freak out this is a little sticky and if something actually falls off you can just kind of stick it back on somebody in the group said that they um glue theirs on with a, just a tiny dab of glue if something is lifting. So here is our cutout and here is what it's going to look like, at least the design. It's not showing the color that we chose, but um, that's why we keep things inside the box because we'll know what color is in that infusible ink. So at this point, we can turn on our easy press and get this onto our wine bag. How do I know what temperature I'm going to go on? If you have an easy press, what do you do about the temperature? Well, I'm going to show you. Get your iPad or your whatever device, even your desktop out, and then go to your Google uh, internet search, or in this case, Safari, and we're going to go to something called the Cricut Heat Guide. You can search for this in Google. It's so useful. I would recommend um, uh, bookmarking this okay so it basically gives you all four of the heat press types and it allows you to input the material and the base material and it will tell you the temperature and also instructions okay so I have a Cricut Easy Press too so I'm going to choose that one actually I have all of these but <laughs> this is one we're using today and then I'm going to select the material which in this case is my infusible ink transfer sheet okay and then base material we can choose it, it, to be honest, it, it could work with a t-shirt tote bag, but we're going to choose wine bag because, oh well, we're going to do that. We choose a Cricut Easy Press Mat and hit apply. And you'll see I have to, I'll get real close so you can see, I have to preheat my base 15 seconds. And then I'm going to set my Easy Press to 385 and I'm going to press this for 60 seconds. Okay. So let's Get this easy press over here so you can have a look at what 
this meat. So here's meet the easy press. <laughs> so here is my easy press and it turns on with this one button. And if you want to change the temperature, you use this button. You want to change the time, you use this button. So I believe the temperature is set for the last uh, temperature you had it on, which was yesterday, 385. So um, it's all set. It's going to go to the 385 that I need to go, and you'll see it climbing here, okay? And But the temperature, um, sorry, the timing is set for 40 seconds, and ours needs to be 60 seconds. So I press on that stopwatch, and while it is blinking, use the up or down the plus or minus until you get the uh, 60 seconds that you want. You stop and it eventually stops uh, blinking. What this is going to do is when you are ready to press and this light is green, so it means that the temperature is reached the temperature it's set for, you're going to press this button and um, it will immediately start to count down from the 60 seconds. Now, when you're doing anything with a heat press, you really need to use the proper, I hope I can find it, the proper mat. Where's my mat? All right. I had three of them yesterday. So I'm going to use this mat and I'm just going to move some things around here because we've got a limited space. Let's move these. Oops. I have... Uh, pushed this out of the way. This is a useful thing to have. Let's get set up on our mat while our temperature is going up, okay? So there's our, our design. And what you need um, is in addition to the design and the bag, you're going to need some butcher paper. Now, this butcher paper obviously is bigger. It comes, by the way, in the box that uh, that you have. Um, it does not come in the smaller boxes all the time, so definitely keep it even if you've used up a box of your infusible ink. You'll see what I'm doing here is I'm taking one of the sheets and folding it into fours. That's so that I can put it inside of the wine bag because I don't want the design to leak through and that could happen. So I'm just pushing it down, making sure it's flat here. It's not. Okay, here we go. So there's our um, wine bag and we're gonna take our design and sort of eyeball where we're going to put it. Um, on the, the heat guide, it does also give you a little, I think, oh no, it doesn't, huh. It usually gives you a little uh, picture of what it, your what your order needs to be in so here is your easy press mat there is white cardstock inside or you can use butcher paper inside of the bag there's the wine bag there's the design facing down so you can read it and this is the plastic on top so the plastic needs to be on top then we're going to put more butcher paper and then the easy press okay but before we start pressing, we do need to sort of make sure, I live in a home that has a lot of furry animals, so it's a very good idea to get yourself one of these. It's just your basic lint roller, nothing special. Um, and you just want to go ahead and roll this. Even if you don't have animals like me, sometimes there'll be stray pieces of hair from you or from someone else or even like lint, real actual lint, um, and also uh, like little threads and stuff like that. So it's a good idea to do this, okay? So we do that. Remember, we have to preheat the area. So we do that by taking the 
easy press. These things are heavy, by the way. And we're going to just put it on here. I'm going to press the button because I, even though it needs to only be for 15 seconds, I want to keep track because sometimes I talk too long or um, I just lose track of time. So I'm just going to make sure it gets down to the 45 seconds. There we go. Okay. So... There is our preheated and nicely lint rolled wine bag, okay? And it's warm. We're gonna take and put the design where we want it. I like it sort of in the middle. Now, the thing about working with these kinds of products is that they have seams and you're going to want to avoid um, any place to put the design along the seams because this will cause a problem with the heat getting uh, direct onto the design. And remember, you need heat to get this to work. So um, having, having it here in the middle is going to work for us, right? And I think it's a little bit off center. So to me and I'm eyeballing it, but this looks good. So now I'm ready. I have to take my butcher paper and put that on. It really doesn't matter which side. If this works for you because it stays flat, then you can do it that way. But one thing we want to do is make sure that our press is on the entire design. So look on the side and on the top and bottom to make sure it's on the on the entire design and then hit your button and wait. You don't need to press down on the easy press. This handle is just for, sometimes you will need to press a little bit more than than what I'm doing, which is just holding my hands here. Um, but it's mostly just for moving the press around, okay? Uh, what's the other thing that I wanted to, mention to you about the press it's super super hot and you can easily burn yourself or burn your surroundings so I always put down one of these self-healing mats on my work surface as you probably have noticed and um, if you get this near anywhere near that self-healing mat like say you don't have this this mat that's here, um, you will warp those self-healing mats. You will, uh, and it's really annoying, okay? So here we go. So we're gonna take off our, our paper. We can save this because even though it's got a little bit of a sheen to it where it was heated, you can see, um, it hasn't got any ink on it. Sometimes when you're using the infusible ink, or if you're using the pens, the ink will bleed onto the butcher paper and that's pretty much ruined, okay? So you notice it's sort of kind of lifting. It's still very, very hot. So you want to do this either when it's cool or um, very carefully and you just start lifting and you'll notice that off comes your tape, but also comes the paper, just like that. You see? Now I wanna show you the paper. See, it is no longer a light green. It is gone. I mean, there are, there's nothing left to it. You cannot reuse this, okay? So that is a, you know, throwaway. But here's our design. Look at it. It is, I'm gonna get real close. It is really inside of this almost burlap-like wine bag. I mean, it's really professional looking, if you ask me. And um, nobody needs to know that you made it unless you tell them. But I want to just kind of like pull it and stuff. If you used iron-on, sometimes the iron-on won't stick in all the places. This isn't an issue of sticking because the... the um, the ink actually turns into a gas, okay? And it and it actually it actually turns into a gas and goes right into the back. That's why we put the paper inside and there you go. Now I just need a 
a nice bottle of wine and a little card and I'll be all set for my wedding on Saturday. Obviously, not everybody's going to give give these out for weddings, which, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's a little unconventional, but I just don't want to give them just plain old money in a card. So I want to just bring you back to the canvas and show you where you can find more images of these. So if you go to in, in the iPad and go to images, and I got here by being on the canvas and choosing image plus, okay? Now what you can do is you can just type in wine bag here, but the better thing for me at least is to go to highlighted categories and then choose image sets and just type in wine and these are all the image sets now some of them are not wine bags but there are quite a few look here there's a whole set for purim which is a jewish holiday there's a set for valentine's Kwanzaa, Thanksgiving, there's every day, there's new home, happy holidays, and Hanukkah. So if you are in the habit of giving wine for those occasions, um, just check them out under image sets and you'll see there's quite a few. I like the celebrate one. Look at that, let's get jolly. Wouldn't that look cute in red or green? Um, just really fun. And they're all pretty much the size that you need them to be for this. Some of them might be a little bit bigger than this Cheers one, but um, let's pull one into, let's pull this Celebrate one into our, you notice it's sideways, but I want to, let me get rid of the Cheers for a second. If you want to see the size, because it's important um, if you happen to have a design, you do need to check the size. You would bring it into your um, canvas and hit edit and you will see the size. So it's 3.7 inches wide and 10.34 inches high. Two things that tells me. Uh, with a width of 3.7 inches, that's going to cut on the joy because the joy can cut up to 4.25 inches. So that's going to work out perfectly. The other thing it tells me is the size. So if I look on my wine bag, whichever one you choose, you will see that it says 5.75 inches by 13. That fits well in this well in this so um, we could go ahead and do this one just like that but if you need to resize it you can always resize it um, and let's see I want to just see what this one size was this one was smaller 8.3 inches um, high and with a height of 2.3 it's changed because it's not turned on its side so let us just I want to just reiterate this is how you would do it you'd hit make it you choose on the mat you would go up here to the mat you would make sure that it was mirrored so that you can't really see it because it's backwards you'd hit continue and you would choose your tran infusible ink transfer sheet which is what I'm doing. And then you will you can't see it, but my joy machine is blinking and it's ready to go. So I just put my infusible ink right on there. And again, it's uh, this side goes up and that's what has all the ink on it. So just like that. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, I. I, I know that it's sort of the same. Infusible ink on the Joy is basically the same what we did yesterday, infusible ink. But for people who just have a Joy, they might not understand how it works. So I wanted to make sure that you did understand that. Tomorrow on the show, we are going to do something called slicing.
okay? So um, what happens if you want to do two different colors? So in this box, say, we've got these four colors, and if we wanted to take an image and turn part of it one color and the other part the other color, you can't do layering like you normally do with uh, with iron on. So I'm going to show you how to slice so that you can do it at once, one press, and get two different colors, okay? So that's tomorrow on the show. I don't know what we'll press it on. Maybe we'll press it on a pillow or, hmm, I don't know. We'll see. But I want to show you how that slicing works, okay? Thank you so much for your attention today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if there's some value that you're getting out of these videos, please, please, please follow me, share it with a friend, or tell somebody, or comment. I read all of your comments, and the comments really do help because it, it increases the algorithm. I don't know how that works, but this is what I'm told. So please um, interact with me. I'm here. I'm a real person and I love to um, hear from you and it helps me. Let's do a pillow. Yeah, let's do a pillow. Okay, we'll do a pillow. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you again tomorrow at nine o'clock. Take care.